everybody. Whenever I'm on a backpacking trip or using a canoe or kayak on some epic adventure, I'm always gonna choose a hammock over the tent. Matter of fact, if it wasn't for the hammock, my hiking days would more than likely be over. And I'll explain that later. In the hammock world today, the two most popular hammock is the gathered end and the bridge hammock. Each has different features and characteristics, which could be challenging for someone that's thinking about getting a hammock and not knowing which one to get. In this episode, we're gonna look at those differences, the pros and cons, and to find out which one would work best for you. Now first, the gathering end hammocks use a traditional design brought back from South America, either Brazilian or Mayan. They're not much more than a rectangular piece of fabric, which are gathered on the ends and are connected to some type of suspension and supported off the ground. Now the next most popular hammock design is the bridge hammock which can be confused with the lawn spreader bar hammock. The bridge hammock is modeled after a suspension bridge, hence the name. What makes this design desirable is the unique head to foot flat lay, almost like floating on a cot. These use spreader bars on both ends to hold out the edges and to reduce shoulder curvature. With the gathered in hammock, there's a little bit of a learning curve to them to get comfortable. This traditional design, you have to lie asymmetrical. You have to shift your body around to your diagonal in that hammock to achieve that flat lie. This is what we call the sweet spot. Most people, when they first start out, they'll jump in the hammock and lie symmetrical, straight up and down which causes the pesty banana shaped position. After a short time, this will become very uncomfortable putting pressure under the legs and behind the knees and back. I'm no banana. And with a bridge hammock, you just climb in and you're always lying flat without trying to find that sweet spot. I found it. I think I'm gonna take a nap, catch you guys later. Another issue that someone may face using a gathered in hammock is leg hyperextension or calf ridge, which is caused by the material bunching up to create a ridge that presses under the leg or the calf muscle, which can be uncomfortable. A quick remedy to this problem is to lift your leg up and press the heel of your foot against the material with pressure and push it all the way down to remove that ridge. With a bridge hammock, you never have to worry about calf ridge. And my favorite thing about this design is the view. With the gathered in hammock, you're always gonna have some of the material get in the way or obstruct your view. But with the bridge hammock, with its low cat cuts, the landscape and that beautiful scenery will not be hindered by any type of fabric. And also it provides great ventilation during those hot summer nights. And for someone starting out with the prices of underclothes today, this is the perfect hammock to use a mat or mattress underneath you. You don't have to worry about them shifting around like they would be asymmetrically in a gathered end. It does take time and patience to get asymmetrical under the mat. But they do work well. 
An air mattress is a little easier to get into, but not as effective as a closed foam mat. And with a double layer model, even better. And some companies that make gathered in hammocks will have an option so you also can have a double layer. While these hammocks have a unique lay, they can be constricting across the shoulder for some folks. Those of us that have broad shoulders, you have to be careful of shoulder squeeze. They're also more prone to be a little wobbly due to the higher center of gravity. Another con is some may require a longer hang span, but I never had a problem with this. And because of the additional hardware like spreader bars or pulls, which adds weight. But you can get graphite pulls which will cut the weight of those pulls in half. And for a tarp above you, a rectangular shaped tarp works the best. And for someone on a budget, those cheap poly tarps will fit the bill. With the rectangular design of this hammock using spreader bars, not only do you achieve a flat lie, but also you can sleep on your back, your side, and your stomach. Now I don't sleep on my stomach, so I can't confirm that for those stomach sleepers. For those folks that are big and tall, this might not be the best choice. They claim that it fits a person up to 6'2", but I know someone that's 6'4 and loves it. But again, you may experience shoulder squeeze, which leads us to the gathered in hammock. They come in many different styles and models, and some with unique shapes. They come in lengths of 10, 11, and 12 feet, and the width will vary between the brand and models. The fabric typically sticks with the two to one ratio, and I recommend never get any hammock under 10 feet because they're just too small and narrow and uncomfortable if you're gonna use them overnight. But if you're gonna use them to lay out and kick back at a park, then you'll be just fine. And for those DIY people, the gathered end is an easy design and simple to make. You can customize them to fit you just perfect. And those of you that want to lighten your pack, the gathered end is designed to be light and great packability. And with that being said, where the gathered end really shines is after a long day of hiking. And when I get to camp, my muscles all over my body are aching. And sometimes, where they're aching so much, I can barely walk. But when I get in that hammock at nighttime and I wake up the next morning, those aches and pains are gone. It's amazing how my body's rejuvenated and I'm ready for that next day of hiking. And without those spreader bars, the fabric wraps and conforms around my body, leaving no pressure points. Leaving me with the best night of sleeping. And because of that quality, a big difference between the gathered end and the bridge hammock, which no one talks about, when the temperatures are really cold, especially extremely cold, when using an underquilt, the gathered end hammock is much warmer than the bridge hammock. Again, that's because it wraps around your body, leaving no gaps and eliminating those unwanted space to steal the heat. Another thing that's great with this design is that they're great to lounge in. And when you fold that fabric over, they make a great chair to sit in. Now I know people are gonna ask, 
Which one do you prefer? Now you guys, when I'm at home and I'm sleeping in my bed, I'm a side sleeper. So both of these are not gonna be an issue. But if I was a stomach sleeper, then of course I'd have to go with a bridge hammock. But this is how I use them. In the summertime, when it's really hot, I prefer to use a bridge hammock, mainly because of the view and the ventilation. This is also the hammock I'll set up in my house to sleep in. But for the other three seasons, I prefer to use the gathered in hammock. And both of them will work just fine for all the four seasons. It comes down to personal preference and comfort. Well, this ends this episode. If there's anything I missed or anything you would like to add, any questions or comments, please write it down below. I'd love to hear from you. This is the Marine. Thank you for watching and God bless. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden.